Welcome. It is the year of 2019, dated February or month February, day number 8, 12.13 a.m. New York City time zone. Although I'm not in New York City. Let's take a look at silver. Let's take a look at gold. Let's take a look at the stock market, all the non-crypto markets. Not all of them, but some of them and very few of them. Hey, we'll throw palladium in there as well. Maybe the dollar index. And when I say maybe, there will be. So within the silver market, uh, coming up to this line at 16 and 14 cents, resisting it, coming back to where it came from, this level of resistance from January 3rd through January the 16th. 18 average of lows. It's uh, been rising for quite some time now. Went below it once, but failed breakdown, fast move higher. Now it's correcting from that fast move. For the original failed move was a break of this level of support. And then it uh, had a decent leg higher than that. That would be enough for me to constitute that as that of, well, the failed breakdown. Well, break, yeah, failed breakdown. Looking at this more longer term, weekly chart still well above the 18 average of highs. It's key area where it came from more longer term or more intermediate term rather. I would, yeah, I guess however you want to look at it. Four, 1492. So therefore, basically a must hold area. If not, it's going to be a decent leg lower. But breaking out above here, hey, you know what? This thing has potential for some pretty fantastic moves. So the lines represent Fibonacci retracement. It's retraced 38.2% of its rally. It's now having its test amongst the 18 average of highs. The gold price also coming up to a key Fibonacci level at 13.21. Also correcting within the 18 average. It hasn't came back to where it came from, unlike silver, where this little area here around 12.96 is... Well, multiple hit to say the least but the uptrend remains very much active and we'll take a look more at these lines in here we got a bunch of them so uh, just two key areas of support if it's going to be going down just by looking at this you really can't determine where the lines happen to meet and well what the answer is is these two nuts as long lines the lower ones represent Fibonacci from this low to this high and the these two numbers rep or lines that represent the numbers from the side of the slope and it's had multiple multiple hits within that uh, level in here once twice this three times four times five times again for a six now a seventh the more times you hit it the more likely it is you take it out it has done a phenomenal job since the December 2015 lows of making higher lows for this correctionary move and then this one in here the last one last summer was a higher low from the winter of 2016 2017 and getting above fear I would expect nothing more than a very fast move to this level which would probably pierce extra higher so therefore 15 and a half I would expect a relatively fast move. One to two periods, I would think it would do it in, or one to two months. And then breaking it above this level of resistance, 5,000, 10,000 gold, I mean, th that to me is uh, not a surprise. And to be expected because of what I call that a fiat currency and other people. A lot more these days than when I first did so back in here, when I learned what fiat currency meant. A lot of more people know what that term means. And this gives me a perfect time to transition into the US dollar index. And when you think about, when I think rather, about when I hear things about interest rates are doing this, they're increasing it, decreasing it, they're buying up stocks, they as in the inflationary money system, they're doing this policy amongst a bank, they're trying to help out this way. They're trying to make things better. That's the key word. Trying to make things better. Even if it's just for the short term. In fact, usually always for the short, short term. I look at that analogy as in 
better is an interesting term. For, let's assume you wanted to drink some water. It would probably be better if you were to flush the, the toilet. I try not to laugh because I don't want to do a retake, but flush the toilet first. Then take your glass and fill up the water. You could resist the urge to take water out of the fridge or out of the water filter or even out of the tap because it would be better if you flush the toilet because it could have been sitting there for hours and hours or many periods of time and things are just accumulating in there. But I really believe that that's a good way I like to look at the US dollar. Now against other fiat currencies it's holding in there pretty well for my prediction really rough at the end of 2016 as it was going here saying it's toppy it's gonna go down which it did but then this failed move higher that's just the way it goes because when did I predict it I predicted it right in here actually so sorry right in round in here when it was breaking down at 9270 leaving the 18 average and it had this failed breakdown and well it's getting this little sideways range and well, that's just how it is. It's almost like drinking toilet water as far as... I, I shouldn't be using that term, I guess. But as far as uh, all this uh, interest rates and the whole interest system, to me, that's a comparable thing. Now let's go back to another metal, palladium. Looks like silver. I think it's... it's Okay, it's stronger than silver as far as its usage, I think. And I don't know physically if it's... I don't know what is stronger. I know gold is heavier than gold and silver. But its price movement is most certainly stronger. Within the daily chart, this thing just keeps on going up. And I'm going to scroll. It's been going up for even longer than the start of this, going back to October. But we recently hit this high, January 17th. Correctionary move, coming back to the 18th. The last three days now into today having great great congestion amongst the 18 highs congesting an area it only st stayed a short period of time there on january the 31st so i can see this probably more clearly amongst the four and or one hour time frame so there we have it there's a spot where and here it didn't spend much time it didn't spend much time over here as well but that would be its next level of resistance is in, in at 14. But the last few hours in here, if, if it can continue and hold and support this, like I'm seeing, the 18 average of lows. Right now, let's get the exact number. It's in, a, and I'm not trading this in any ways, but 1374 and a half is where it is on the current four hour and rising. But holding this area where it came from, that would be most certainly spectacular. Even if it just goes sideways to the end of the week, which is the end of Friday. And then that would really be looking like a beautiful, beautiful mode. So daily chart again, as I stated, this thing has just been like going up nonstop pretty much. From this low of 833.1382, weekly term time frame. Well, this was a nice correctionary move. The resistance was established and taken out nicely. For we can see it came up to it on October 22nd, congested it up and down below and above late November and having a decent leg higher. It's already high enough for if it tops, okay, that's a good leg. And I'm long term going to be looking for 1140 as an area of support but what's to say that this thing is over as it is for once we have this uh, top in here basically pause moves even though they're red down candles and even though this is a green up one this is three periods currently just congesting this move but we're in an uptrend the bias should be still to the upside it's not overextended like it was in September in here but it's corrected through time for just three days then it got a little overextended here from this move and it corrected through price 
and in here a congestionary point then a little overextended up here but it didn't correct for much just three days in price and extended again and it's been correcting for a while so another move higher most certainly would not surprise me and if it's oh 15 20 and say well, where are we? This is the weekly charts in the start of spring. Yeah, yeah, not a surprise. No, not by no means. Monthly chart. This area that it broke out of, quite frankly, is quite big. For it's this area from its 2000 top. And great up and down volatility. How many people got scared out in 2008? Yay, hooray, all that type of fun stuff. Buy low, sell high. How fun you're having that. As if you look at that strategy, and I'm just saying this for whichever market you want to play this in, however you can do it. Selling up here, up to this high in 01, then you, all the sell orders become buy filled. A little bit of selling up here, a little bit of buying in here. A lot of selling to the 2007 high buying it all back with the Lehman Brothers failure all that type of stuff and then you have great selling and not so great buying since then a little bit here then a little bit of selling and okay amount of buying and basically what that tells me is this long-term correctionary move in here is fantastic fantastic supporting this area where it came from and when it came up here there was like no time really at all that it spent at this high and it didn't even spend too much time up here when it got to this level, which in this case supported it, which was just magnificent. Holding and staying above 530 for a decent amount of time. And albeit it is still barely above the 2000 or the two at yeah, the 2000 highs, whereas silver is barely still decently well below its 1980 highs. So silver right now is my favorite, of course, precious metal. Let's move on to the stock market next. And we'll use a Dow Jones. Whether I use this, the S&P, it's pretty much all the same. In fact, the S&P actually has more data than this has. I'm impressed with how much data there is. I wish they'd have silver prices going back to 1968, but they don't. Even, for that matter, 1913. This one goes back to that point we'll do we'll take a look at that however big big volatile moves up and down especially like since this 2018 top phenomenal trading because before then it was just grinding its way decently straight up for like a, quite a while we'll take a look at that more clearly on the longer term time frames but a lot of up and down choppy movements and to say that this one is a big one I think at least for its volatility it's been having would be an understatement going from this high down to this low and it's pretty much close to this previous area now stock markets are near its all-time highs there's a, a lot of fear in the markets for uh, these these moves that come in and people get shaked out and all that stuff and well long term we'll take a look to see if uh, this thing looks toppy or not but from this case it's is it overextended? Yes and no. It's been going up well from this 18 average for quite some time. It got above it on January the 7th. It hasn't even fell below for the and held below the 18 average of, of highs at all. I mean, it went below it barely. This is why I say hold and stay above it because technically speaking, it dipped below it on uh, the uh, 28th, but probably only for like within the day maybe like an hour or some short period of time maybe even less than that so it's staying above it very well therefore the pattern is in the up move and it can just continue on making this move all the way up to these previous resistance points first level of resistance of big uh, area I be, was look, would be looking at would have been 24298 ish area or these two levels of support three levels of support and what we've seen in here is that it didn't resist it, it in fact supported it it established some shorter term resistance and has gotten above it so now it's coming up and testing this previous area of resistance it's in the lower end of it it can go up to around 26,000 26 26.2 and then this high here the all time highs is 26 and many dollars higher 26.6 or something in that ballpark area 
And look at this. Uh, let's take a look at this on the weekly chart. Beautiful uptrend that it had, and it's been choppy. It goes below the 18 average of lows, then above it, then below it. Now it's making a move to possibly get above it. So therefore, until it gets above this range, this big level of resistance, multiple hit, it's just going to be in this sideways consolidation. It originally had support established at 23.3. It's lowered it now to 21.8 if there's going to be any correctionary moves. So therefore, two levels of key support, which is those two numbers I just now mentioned off, and again, this is just a major uptrend since the 2009 lows. There's the lows right in here. Just straight up, a little bit of that. There's been a few moves that have managed to go below the 18 lows in here. So a few shakeouts back and forth. These were mild in here. A little more aggressive within this longer, more sideways consolidation amongst this bull market. And now a more aggressive one again or really in the same vote of what it was doing in here. And if we're looking for comparisons amongst the situations, the first significant leg lower, and then there was a second one in here. So leg lower one, leg lower two, and now we have move number one. Maybe you wanna count that. Some might count this as maybe a first move. Big thing is breaking this level of support, decent chance that maybe we can fill some of this empty space decent sized leg as it is going from here to here but until it breaks this level of support I don't want to guess how it's going to break this range especially when it's in the middle part of it but I realize if it breaks resistance then a lot more of this type of action or this type of action or even choppiness or more volatile action like that could very easily take place as well let's look next at the monthly chart and from its uh, 2009 lows, it's still holding. It's a bull market. Correctionary moves from this first one here after it established its first resistance level. Obviously successful. This is a couple of times where it's uh, corrected the 18 closes. Then another time it corrects the 18 lows in here. 18 goes sideways. But it doesn't break down from such. And as we're looking at it in here now, 18 average is starting to move sideways. However, if it's able to uh, break out above this, that's not going to happen. It will continue to rise like bull markets do. If it stops going up and plays more towards the 24,000 or breaks 25,000, then most certainly the formation of co the completion of the flattening out will take place, sort of like it is in here. And then on a long-term time frame, when you have a situation where you establish resistance in a bull market, which was the case in here, and then market neutralizes, and then you see price action falling below, that's the 18 starts to go below, then you're talking about reversal of trends or the early stages for how one such would look at. More, of course, towards the sideways range in here that the 18 average is going to be neutral long time long term which monthly time frame is now we're starting to talk about long term analyses then i'm going to, just going to say short term again not try to predict which side it's going to break in or out of next i've heard a lot of good fundamental reasons for why it's going to break down and i agree with a lot of them and the main ones is because of different ratios uh that mike maloney has come up with and I just go on the fact that when markets are just way up so high, they got to go down as it is. And as well as the fundamentals that the high frequency trading bankers, well, they have buy low, sell high strategies similar. I'd have to say a lot more complex to the way I buy low, sell high. So they would want, probably want to see lower prices as well as I would. If I was actively trading this, I want it to go down. I really, really do because... I would have sold a lot over the last long term period. Yeah, but until it breaks the range, it's going to do what it does. But fundamentally, this thing going way higher makes sense too. It's called inflation. Simply, it's inflation. But that should be the case. Everything else, like Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies, precious metals, gold, silver, palladium, platinum, all should follow suit as well. So within where the market came from, 
this is pretty much the entire duration of everything and the market's been in a, just a major up run I can't show you the 18 average like I kind of would want to or put like a half year chart is probably what I'd even want to look at but the 1929 crash to say it would be the biggest one it's had at least since the start of this time frame over 100 years ago would most certainly be the truth especially looking at this on a logarithmic scale this would have been the uh, I mean this was a crash when you adjust I mean inflation was just massive in here and then up move sideways consolidation so the dot com bubble the 2008 was just part of the sideways movement so it's already broken the sideways move so another reason outside of just normal inflation which is the main reason this goes up in the first place anyway but the main reason why I go up more is because it's broken this so its status is new leg higher so saying this is too high could have been like saying this was too high and the similar type of comparison then it just had a huge huge move therefore having something like that occur and seeing oh 140,000 Dow I mean sure why not why not the why so is because of fiat currency and how it's made and I, I've been look, researching just to, watching a few of the recent videos for Venezuela. I haven't done a search on that in probably about a year, nine months to 12 months. So I've watched anything made in the last three or four months. And they're going through very difficult hyperinflationary times. And the global hyperinflationary move it's coming. I really truly believe that. It's it's I don't, I'm going to have to say fortunate and unfortunate. Fortunate because the world needs it. We don't need to be drinking water out of the toilet, especially even after you flush it. Fight the temptation. You can go and get it from the fridge. Meaning we can get away from this debt-based system and into better economies. And of course, the reason why you don't want it is because it's really it's difficult because a lot of people are, are are suffering and are going to be suffering a lot more greatly as these times continue to go into play because you can only drink that toilet water for so long before you get extremely sick of it in fact you should be just sick of it just hearing it this way have yourself a great day bye bye